This is going to be titled, How to Learn from Great Men. Number one, you need to realize that great men aren't always wise and great men are still sinners. Job 32 9 says, Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are great men who do some unwise things. If you can realize that every great man is going to say and do some unwise things, then you can get the truth that is there. Danny Castle, a man who has had a tremendous effect on my life, said this great quote to me personally. He said, Every great preacher has some major flaw or situation or something that gives you an ex excuse not to listen to them. And if you want the truth, you have to dig through the junk. Most people will hear one thing about a preacher or a teacher and won't even give that man a chance. They will stick to the men in their camp or... They will read a book about a man that is full of slander and write him off forever. Then they will spread the lies they learned from the book and everyone else will write him off. But some of the greatest preachers or teachers that I know of have something they teach or something that took place in their life that people will use to discredit them and run their name in the ground. And you need to realize all these men are still men. All men still sin, all men still have flaws, and even though they have a calling on them, they still sin, and they will still make unwise decisions. They can still be deceived, and it's possible that they could teach heresy even. It is a work of the flesh in Galatians 5 to teach heresy, and sometimes a person will blast a great man over a certain sin he committed, but they're just lucky that God doesn't reveal to everyone what they have been thinking about or watching TV or the X-rated thoughts they have in their mind. If you're going to learn something, then you need to realize every preacher or teacher or other Christian that gives you advice or tells you something about the Bible, you need to realize they're still a sinner. And if that person says something that is wrong, then just don't agree with it. The book is always the final authority, but just because a great man has flaws and has messed up in his life in the past doesn't mean he doesn't deserve some respect, and it doesn't mean you can't learn something from him. And you also need to swallow your pride. You need to face the fact that you don't know everything. Maybe you know something that a great man doesn't know, but he also knows something you don't know. And just because you know something he doesn't know doesn't mean he doesn't know a lot more than you know. And if you shut up and listen to him for a while, then you'll know what you know, and then you'll know what he knows. And maybe you should try giving someone honor other than yourself or other than your favorite Bible teacher or your favorite preacher. I worry about a person in ministry who never compliments another man's ministry. And I'm weary of a man who says, don't use study Bibles or don't use commentaries. Just read the Bible only, is what they'll say. Yet he wants you to listen to everything he says. Is he not also a man? But First Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And there are men who are worthy of double honor. And now when you start complimenting preachers or teachers, Immediately, a self-righteous individual will jump up and say, You're just worship, worshiping a man. But it's not worshiping him. You're giving him honor where honor is due. Was Jesus Christ worshiping a man? When he said this in Matthew 11, 11, he said, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Notice Jesus Christ said John was a great man. And there are many great men who have helped me since I believe the gospel. You have a lot of people who will say, I don't follow a man, I only follow Jesus Christ. And they think that sounds so spiritual. 
but these are just baby Christians who are trying to sound super spiritual, and they will only have a text-only Bible without notes or references. They won't listen to a teacher. They would never sit under another man. And if someone compliments a pastor or teacher, as I said before, they'll quickly say, quit following a man, follow the Jesus Christ, or follow the Bible. But some people... They just don't understand. They won't touch a reference Bible. They won't touch a commentary. They won't sit under a pastor. They just get a text-only Bible and write their own notes. And how does that make sense? Aren't your words the words of a man? If you got a text-only Bible and you write your own notes in it, is that not the words of a man? Or do you think you're God? You think you're right on everything, so I guess you must be the final authority. Because you say, don't follow a man. If you got a text only Bible that's got your notes in it, then you're just following yourself. So it's okay to follow another man. And Jesus Christ Himself gave us men to follow. You need to learn that you can follow a man. In Ephesians four, nine through twelve it says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He descended he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So Jesus gave us pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints and to edify the body of Christ. So why is it that? People won't accept this. They have a pride problem and they can't stand the thoughts of not being the final authority in their life. And they can't accept the, the fact someone may know more Bible than they know. 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You can follow a man down any road as long as he is following what the Bible says. And if he strays from the Bible, then don't believe what he says. It's that simple. Uh, quit being jealous. Jealousy will keep you from learning from anybody. And while they are preaching or teaching, there's a lot of people that will say uh, or think in their mind, they'll say, I don't know why they're in the position they're in and teaching me because I could be doing it better. And that shows you have a lot of pride. You need to quit wanting to be the greatest. And if you are worried about being better than someone else, then you will be too busy trying to outdo them and you're, you're not going to learn anything from that person. But with this being said, here are some short descriptions of men that I follow and have followed since I have been saved. And they have helped me and I've learned a lot from each one of them. But the first one I'd like to talk about is Pastor Danny Castle. And he is a pastor of Shining Light Baptist Church in North Carolina. He has been preaching for nearly 50 years and has pastored two different churches close to like 20 years apiece. And I got saved after hearing him preach on a website called JesusIsSavior.com. A website created by David J. Stewart who I also have learned a lot from. And that was the first time I had heard real Bible preaching in my life, preaching that immediately let me know I was sinful and on my way to hell. And I immediately downloaded every sermon of his that I could find and have been collecting them ever since. I probably have close to a thousand now of his sermons, if not more. And some great things I learned from Denny Castle was how to be balanced, how to treat other Christians, how to have mercy on other Christians. How to give people the benefit of the doubt. And how not to think you're right and everyone else is wrong. He preached with just straight up common sense in a way that the common man could understand him. And he is just a common man and not some big shot preacher. I mean, you don't get disgusted by his ego when you hear him preach. Uh, he's down to earth and I can relate to that more than I can some of the more high class preachers who pretend to be down the earth but it just really doesn't work out and it kind of seems fake so i just really can't relate to it but he is also a king james bible believer 
and that will be a characteristic of every man that I mention. And while I don't doubt the salvation of men who use the new Bibles, I just feel like it'd be more worthy of my time to listen to other King James Bible believers. Uh, maybe I could learn some practical truths from someone who doesn't have the right Bible, but if he doesn't know which Bible is right, then what does he really have to say? But Danny's really loud and hard preaching was something that I was in serious need of as a new new Christian. I had a lot of things that needed to be changed and sins to be taken out of my life. Listening to his preaching eight hours a day, six days a week at work really helped me with my sin problems and helped me get rid of some pet sins. And Denny Castle's name gets thrown around and beat down by many other preachers. And many men believe they are too good to even sit under Pastor Danny Castle. When I first got saved and introduced to his preaching, I started telling other men about his preaching because it had helped me out so much. And to my surprise, really to my surprise, a preacher told me that he wouldn't walk across the street to hear Pastor Danny Castle. And I learned a lot from that conversation. I started to learn that People, no matter if you think they're just going to be... I mean, I thought this guy was going to be some great Christian. I hadn't been around in Christians too much. And I thought this guy was just going to be real positive and say that he loves Danny Castle or something. But I learned something from that conversation is that you can't just write someone off over something that happened in the past or slander that person and there is a lot of slander thrown his way and a lot of rumors that that man doesn't know 100 percent sure that's true and even if those things were true we have all been sinful and wicked people and if god forgives people then why can't you forgive that person and maybe i realize this more than some others because as a new christian I had just come out of a wicked life myself back then. And there are tons of rumors about Danny that aren't even true. And you can't believe everything you hear. People are out to shoot fellow Christians down over things that aren't even factual. And after meeting Danny personally, on many occasions, he is just like he is when he preaches. Exactly the same, talks the same, has the same stories, the same sense of humor. And something about Danny is that he has numerous styles of preaching rolled into one. So whatever kind of preaching you like, you're going to eventually get it. Uh, he has that camp meeting style. Of, you know, he's excited. He yells a lot. But then he also gets deep like the Bible-believing crowd, like a Ruckman or a James Knox. And then sometimes he gets rough like an old-school Phil kid or... Somebody like that, and then sometimes he doesn't get loud and he just talks. Then sometimes he turns into like a glory preacher. He even does verse-by-verse -verse teaching. He does prophecy. If you like end-time stuff, he's always doing the end-times sermons and video presentations. If you like the youth stuff, he's real big into the youth as the youth rally. And there are some preachers who... Inspired by telling these big epic ministry stories. He's got sermons about that. Uh, you never know what you'll get. But I learned tons of different things from Pastor Denny Castle. And I would recommend him to anyone. If you're looking for some preaching to listen to, there's probably a thousand of his sermons on the internet that you could go and listen to right now. But I listened to Denny Castle so much that I started hearing him name some other preachers that he listens to, and one of them was Peter S. Ruckman. And that is the next man I want to mention. Danny Castle made me love preaching, but Peter Ruckman is the one God used to make me fall in love with the Bible. And Peter Ruckman is by far the most hated and most loved preacher that I've, I've know of. I know men that absolutely hate Ruckman, but I also know men who love the work Ruckman has done as much as I do, 
and he is also the most misunderstood preacher that I know of. People believe he is pro-abortion. They believe he hates black people. They believe he doesn't believe there was grace in the Old Testament. Uh, men will say he doesn't even have the right the right to write a book. Uh, he gets so much hate for his, his wife or wives leaving him. And that is another thing many self-righteous Pharisee Baptist preachers can't stand. They look down on a man that has been divorced and remarried. Even if they don't say it deep down, they think they are superior to that person because they had a divorce. And if you are blessed with a faithful wife who will submit to your authority as the man of the house, then that is great and thank God for it. But you need to realize that that's not the case for every person. And many times the wife goes crazy and leaves. And there's nothing the man can do in that situation. And the big criticism against Ruckman is that he has been divorced and remarried. Uh, preachers won't have anything or wouldn't have anything to do with him for this reason. Yet they will use a Schofield Bible. Schofield was divorced and remarried. Schofield also corrects the King James Bible in his notes. And this is something Ruckman never did. And I believe Schofield was a great man. Although I highly disagree with how he changed the King James Bible in his notes, how he corrected it. But I mean, that was back then. They didn't have as much light on this issue as they do now. And I guarantee you if Schofield was here today, he would be a King James Bible believer and believe every word is perfect. I believe the same thing for Clarence Larkin. And there's people who believe that Ruckman is for abortion. And you can look up one of his sermons right now and hear him say abortion is a sin. That's just a rumor. It's just a, a rumor from his critics. And after hearing Danny mention Ruckman, I immediately pu purchased the Ruckman Reference Bible and his Revelation Commentary and immediately was taught the importance of the King James Bible. And I got a love for the word that I never had before. The thing about Ruckman is that he knew Greek and Hebrew, so he became a threat to all the scholars who hated the King James Bible and used the Greek and Hebrew to correct the King James Bible. But he knew the Greek and Hebrew more than they knew it, yet he didn't change it. He believed the English Bible, the King James, was perfect. And he knew that those men wanted to be their own final authority, and they did this by changing the Word of God with the Greek, and Ruckman knew the Greek even better than they knew it, yet he still believed the King James Bible was perfect, and this quickly gave him the title of God's junkyard dog, because any time somebody would attack the King James Bible, then he would attack them, and for that reason, he's got, he's got a reputation of being kind of rough and rude and crude with some in some of his commentaries or in some of his his audio teachings that he has available on his website but if you listen to all of his material you'll see that he was only like that towards the people who were correcting the King James Bible he wasn't like that to his church members or to lost people or to the people he preached to in prisons or to his cl his class, he had his own Bible institute. He didn't act like that when he was teaching his his classes. It was when he got all riled up about people changing the Bible, and I mean, that ought to make somebody mad. Can you blame him for getting mad for somebody changing the Bible? He he was King James only when there was no popular King James only group around. And all of these new preachers today who slander Ruckman would most likely not even be King James only if it wasn't for Ruckman. And I'm not just saying that I'm not saying that God couldn't have raised up someone else, but Ruckman was that guy that he that God did use. Uh, these preachers today who slander Ruckman and badmouth him, they wouldn't even know which Bible is right. Half of them still don't even know why they use the King James Bible. They just use it because their grandpa used it. And all the strong KJV guys today like Sam Gipp or Grady, 
they learned from Ruckman. Gip, another guy who everyone hates, he even went to Ruckman's Bible Institute. He's one of the greatest defenders of the King James Bible. Uh, and today, if you're a King James Bible believer, many people will even label you a Ruckmanite. That is how much of an impact he had on defending the book. How many times have you been called a Ruckmanite for being a King James Bible believer? Uh, I learned to have grace with people that I don't agree with by listening to Ruckman. He's another person that is big on having grace with others. I mean, all those preachers hated him. John R. Rice, Curtis Hudson, them guys hated Ruckman's guts. And yet Ruckman still sells their books in his bookstore to this day. And many people have listened to him only a few times and write him off as just some hateful old man. But you need to listen to more than one message and you will find out he's very a very kind man who witnessed to people daily and chose rather to preach in prisons more than at some huge big shot Baptist meeting somewhere. And yeah, people hear him go crazy on the Bible correctors and he'll call them names and everything else, but that's just how much he loved the book. If you listen to his sermons at his church or lessons he teaches to his students, then you don't hear someone who is angry, but someone who loves the Lord and the Bible and other Christians. And if someone slanders someone to you, then it gives you a preconceived idea of that person. People say he is racist because of some of his speech, but you have to remember that Ruckman was was born in the 1920s, and people talked different back then, a lot different than they do now. And there are tons of pictures with Ruckman, with black converts that he led to Jesus Christ. He had a black housekeeper. I mean, he wasn't racist. Uh, the uh, uh, He once taught a, a black man personally at his, at his house, just one-on-one -on -one for free. The accusations people will throw at him is all because they hate his doctrine. And the devil knows who, who he wants to attack. And you will notice a theme with most of these great men I mention. They have a lot of haters. If you aren't scared of what people will think of you, then I suggest buying his commentaries and getting his reference Bible. He has hundreds of books, enough books to fill a seven-foot shelf. I mean, he, he was a preacher for close to 70 years. Do you, are you really that puffed up and full of yourself that you think you couldn't learn from learn something from somebody like that? Uh, his material has helped me greatly. He isn't just some psycho or some crazy nut that people think he is. Uh, Ruckman was friends with well-respected preachers like Lester Roloff, Carl Lackey, Hugh Pyle, and many other great preachers. A lot of those well-respected preachers did like him, although he was hated by a lot of them. But if you're looking for someone with a great sense of humor, a great Bible knowledge, and someone who has grace with others, then look into Ruckman. Even some guys who claim to listen to Ruckman will say they don't like his speech which makes me wonder if they really listened to him that much. He was hard on Bible correctors, but that's about it. He preached from around 1949 to 2016. That's almost 70 years. He has thousands of hours of Bible teaching and preaching and over a 100 books and commentaries. Talk about laboring in the Word and doctrine. To not give Ruckman a listen because of a few disagreements or because some sin in his past is pathetic. We're all sinners, but God uses us anyway. You're rejecting a gift that God gave to the body of Christ, and the Bible does call pastors and teachers gifts. I just respect the person. I respect anybody who's trying to do something for God. But the next person I want to mention is Pastor David Hoffman. In the first few years of being saved, I didn't have much money, and I couldn't purchase all of Ruckman's commentaries and books, so I started looking for other teachers that were able to put out their sermons and messages for free 
on the internet, and this is where I stumbled upon David Hoffman. Uh, I noticed he had a verse-by-verse study on almost every book in the King James Bible, and I immediately dove right into those teachings and listened to pretty much every single one of them. And I discovered he had, he had a reference Bible as well called the Common Man's Reference Bible. And my wife bought it for me for our anniversary one year. And to this day, it is my main Bible. I bought another one since then. I got the fourth edition that I'm breaking in now. And I, I even prefer it over the Ruckman Reference Bible. Uh, the cross references in his Bible have been a great help to me. Uh, his Bible, along with Ruckman's, is the only ones I know of that don't change the King James in the notes. And I'm not throwing off on the Schofield. I mean, it's great too. I don't have anything against it other than when it does correct the King James. But uh, Hoffman stays true to the King James Bible. And that puts a difference between someone who is King James only and someone who believes the King James because you can be King James only and still not believe it's perfect Hoffman believes it's perfect without exception there's tons of preachers that use the King James and won't use the other versions but they don't believe the King James is perfect also I believe I, I've probably asked Hoffman a thousand Bible questions over the past four or five years and he has answered every single question and do you think these big shot evangelists would answer a bunch of Bible questions for, from some no name like myself? Uh, and it's not because they're just so much more busy. I mean, he pastors two churches, put out a reference Bible, street preaches. I mean, he pastors two churches, not just one. Uh, he witnesses, does radio broadcasts, you know, preaches. I don't know how many times at both churches. Maybe even, even does Sunday school at his churches and still takes time to answer questions of some nobody like me on the internet who listens to his preaching. And I'd say Hoffman's teachings made me fall in love with the King James Bible even more than Ruckman's material. Some of the great things I learned from him was the practical things like dealing with disagreements with other Christians, having grace with other Christians, not getting been all, all been out of shape when people don't agree with you 100%. Uh, he's excellent on these subjects. He's down to earth and doesn't think he is some big shot Bible scholar. And to have that much knowledge and not be puffed up is, is a hard thing to do. But people like to bash him. His name is thrown in the mud and... They throw out his study Bible because of one one small note in that Bible on the flat earth subject. Uh, they will throw away around 40 years of Bible study compiled in his reference Bible because of something stupid, because of his remarks on the flat earth. The lack of grace is ridiculous. And I, I don't care what what shape... He believes the earth is, uh, or or whatever he's teaching on that. All I know is he helped me, and his material has so much truth. And if you throw it out over a few silly disagreements, then you're cheating yourself. And you're not too good to listen to Hoffman. You're not too good to listen to anybody who gives truth from the Word of God. Uh, Hoffman helped me gain a genuine interest and love for the Bible. Outside of giving someone the gospel and telling them how to be saved, that's the greatest gift you can give. And you can get up and preach to someone on sin and make them feel guilty for their sin for 40 minutes, which is a good thing to do. And, and they'll live right until they, you know, forget the sermon or until Monday, and then they're back doing it again. But if you give someone a genuine interest in the Bible and the Word of God, then they'll read it every day and they'll, they'll cleanse their way every day through the Bible reading and not just when they hear you preaching and feel guilty. So Hoffman is a great, a great man to follow.
And in my search of finding verse-by-verse studies, I also came across a preacher named Bevins Welder. He has a huge library of studies on his website, and I couldn't name all the things I've learned from him. Uh, The time and effort he has put into getting all these studies out would be hard to match. He does five radio broadcasts a week, a, a Wednesday night message, Sunday school lesson, and two sermons. You could learn more in a week listening to him than you could in a year from listening to most preachers. And in a day when preachers are charging $10 a sermon, when they could put it out for free, uh, Bevins Welder's ministry is much needed. It's all free. You can get a Bible Institute education from his website for nothing. And if you prefer preachers who don't yell, then you would love Bevins Welder. He preaches hard biblical truth, but he doesn't yell. He's soft-spoken. Hoffman doesn't yell either, and Ruckman doesn't really yell all that much if you prefer that. Uh, you can listen to more than one style of preacher. Although not many people have it heard of Welder, I believe he's one of the greatest teachers alive today. One of the greatest preachers alive. He explains the book just as good as any other man that I've heard, if not better. And next, I want to talk about my pastor. My my pastor's name is Donnie Dalton. And he's helped me along the way as well. From listening to his preaching, he taught me the importance of memorizing scripture. He quotes probably 30, 40, 50 verses from memory in each sermon. And this has definitely inspired me to memorize all the scripture I can along with the chapter and verse. You really can't match his boldness as he preaches, and this is because he has the words of God hidden in his heart. He served God as a faithful Christian since he got saved close to 40 years ago. And honestly, he's probably probably the best Christian I, I know personally in my life. You don't meet many Christians who just live a great Christian life. He's like one of those Christians you meet that you just... You really can't imagine that person as a lost person or that they was ever lost. I mean, you'd think he was like John the Baptist and just came out of his mother's womb gripping a King James Bible or something. So he's definitely a good man to follow. And every time he preaches, it makes you feel like he believes the rapture is going to take place as he's preaching. So he treats it as his last. And I've heard several stories about how he broke his leg while preaching and continued to preach, and then preached again that night. I don't know if that's a legend or if that's true, but I wouldn't doubt it. But the only complaints about him by many is that he is too loud. That's really the only complaints I've ever heard about him, or that he's just tearing out his vocal cords. But, I mean, his sermons make me realize I need to be more excited about where I'm going and about where I'm not going. And he also shows a lot of grace towards others and towards men who believe different. That's another thing that all these men have about them. This has rubbed off on me. He's a King James Bible believer. Uh, I've heard him say you can't improve on the King James with the Greek and Hebrew. He believes the Bible is perfect. He's not just King James only. He's a King James Bible believer. And he preaches on hell more than any preacher I know. His love for other Christians and for sinners shows on his face. I visited the same sinner's house with him probably a hundred times and he keeps going back. And he probably even disagrees with me on a lot of stuff that I believe. But he never tried to run me off or anything just just over disagreements. But he's definitely one of the greatest preachers I know and a great man to follow. And moving on, if you want another free way to learn the Bible that you don't have to pay for, tons of free material at your fingertips, look up Robert Breaker. And when you say a name like that, people will pitch a fit. 
there are a lot of people who absolutely hate and slander Robert Breaker. Uh, he is a preacher that has recently gotten popular on the internet in the past couple of years. And I had been watching him when he had just a few subscribers. But now he has about 200,000. And I knew that when he began to be more successful, that the wolves would come out and start biting and devouring him. Uh, if something good happens for another Christian, be happy for him. Hard times will come his way. It's inevitable. So if that's what you're wanting to happen, then don't worry because it's going to happen. But you want bad things for another Christian because your heart's not where it should be. Robert Breaker has faults. He's a sinner. But that doesn't mean he isn't doing something for God and doesn't mean he doesn't have truth. Uh, they will throw out all the truth of his teachings because his videos are monetized. Meaning an ad will play before his video and he gets money for it. But there are ads popping up all over the place anyway. That doesn't stop you from visiting any other website. If he can make edifying studies to help the body of Christ and do it for a living, then who cares? Uh, they will throw out his teachings because he has some studies where he tries to figure out when the rapture will take place. And like we said at the beginning of the study, every man who does something great for God has something in his teachings or in his life that will give you an excuse not to listen to him. If you want to know truth and get truth from every man, then you have to just dig through what you don't like. If you want to learn verse-by-verse -verse studies and how to rightly divide, look up Robert Breaker. He majors in the verse-by-verse -verse studies, the dispensationalism. If you don't like some of his teachings, then eat the chicken and leave the bones in the plate, as they say. You're not going to find anybody that you completely agree with. Don't cheat yourself out of truth. Uh, Breaker has some great sermons like how to treat other Christians. Or are you a good example? Or brotherly love? Something great about all these guys I'm mentioning is they have a lot of grace towards others. And they know how to treat other Christians. That doesn't mean they haven't messed up. That doesn't mean they are sinless. But they do love God and they want to do right. And there are so many great men I could mention. Men like Jeff Owens, Larry Winkler, Maze Jackson, Billy Kelly, Harry Nix, Phil Kidd. People get mad at Phil Kidd for being so mean. And I mean, you need mean preachers because there's extra hard sinners. Sometimes he says, or teaches some things I completely disagree with and says it in a very rude and crude and mean way. And I could care less. I think it's funny. Uh, don't take yourself too serious. There's other great preachers that I completely disagree with and completely disagree with their attitude and how they go about saying things. Uh, Brian Denlinger, I completely disagree with his attitude and how he says things and a lot of his beliefs completely. But I've learned some things from him over the years that I've not learned from anybody. But there are men with, men with great ministries who have helped me. Uh, men like Matt Crane, the creator of Final Fight Bible Radio, has helped me tons. Uh, he has... A 24-7 King James Bible Believing radio station. And I've learned of so many preachers and good godly music that I hadn't heard of on that radio station. I love the Backwoods Bible broadcast by Andrew Sluter and Randy Keener. Who people hate. People hate those guys. And they give them a hard time. Uh, a lot of older men go after these guys. Talk bad about them slander them. I think a lot of it has to do with jealousy. In a time when most Christians are biting and devouring one another, we should edify one another and build each other up. Uh, that's, that's what I pray for, is that Christians, Bible believers, 
people that are truly born again and in the body of Christ could be together and not at each other's throats and saying how much they hate each other and praying for each other to go to hell and saying, well, he's not saved, he's going to hell and judging who's saved and who isn't saved. Uh, I wish that uh, Christians had a deeper love for each other than what they do. And I'm not for all the you know, religions getting together. I'm not talking about that stuff and being ecumenical. I'm talking about Christians, born again, Bible believers, if they could come together, love each other, and treat each other like they're supposed to be treated, then what could be accomplished for Jesus Christ? And there was a lot of name dropping in this study. Uh, but I don't wish wish any harm to any Christian. Uh, most of, most of the time, when preachers or teachers name drop, then they're shooting down other people. But I just thought it would be refreshing to do a bunch of name dropping and build other people up and compliment them and give them double honor and tell them how much I appreciate them. Some of the people I mentioned probably, probably wouldn't even like me. And I know some of them I mentioned don't like me. This has been How to Learn from Great Men. And I hope this will encourage you to look up some of the men I've mentioned and be more understanding and not give preachers such a hard time and realize that everyone's a sinner. Uh, people make some unwise decisions. People do things that they regret. And one of these days you may do something you regret and make an unwise decision. So when you see someone do something you don't agree with or get off into sin or something that's wrong, then pray for that person. Uh, and then when they get right, then you tell them how much you love them, restore them, and don't beat each other up over every little thing.